Let's pick and roll. All right, going through the existing hard goods, I found a Nerf gun with two magazines. So I pull them and these will sell for 12 to $15. I will not buy these in a thrift store. You probably won't find them loose in a thrift store anyway, but this very lightweight, won't even cost me a dollar, will almost cover the whole haul. So these are the type of small, lightweight things I always pick up and they sell pretty quick too. Here's a pair of on clouds, but too beat up. Searching clothes, look at what I see. All right, the 550s are made in USA. They're somewhat distressed, but the rear and ankle cuffs are totally destroyed. All right, so looking through the hard goods, look at this. An entire set of Tumi luggage. I think every bag has a tag. I'll put one in my collection and those sell for 15 bucks each. It's too bad, these things are absolutely trashed. All right, so just going from the bins. Uh, I got a few orders I gotta pack up for the mailman and then we'll go through the hall. All right, first item up is a pair of Carhartt work pants. I took an offer of $21, had them listed for $24.75, they're in bin 6. Hey, my boy's home, what's up buddy? How you doing? Lunch time? Sure. Alright, I'm just packing some stuff up. Alright, the other two pair of pants are actually Poshmark sales. I got a pair of Adriano Goldschmied and a pair of Levi's. All right, we got the Carhartt men's work pants. Sold on eBay. We got women's Levi wedgie cut. They're like a capri length. Sold on Poshmark, $25. And a pair of Adriano Goldschmieds in like a dark, dark blue. Sold on Poshmark for, I believe, $24. Okay, so the pants from eBay will go in a padded flat rate. But for Poshmark, I use Tyvek envelopes. Save the padded flat rates for your eBay sales where it's cost sensitive for shipping. The Tyvek's on eBay would be dimensional by size and weight, but for Poshmark, it doesn't matter. So use those on Poshmark, save your bubbles for eBay. All right, the other item is a pair of Wagner scissors. They're like surgical scissors, I believe. Found them at the bins, so they cost me absolutely nothing. It's only a couple of ounces. And um, had them listed for like 12 or 14 bucks. Someone sent an offer of 10. I've had them for like six or eight months. So I'm happy to take the 10. All right, for the scissors, I just wrapped them with a little piece of cardboard, very thin, just for protection. Because even though it was only a $10 sale, I treat whether it's a $10 sale or a $100 sale, I treat everyone the same. I make sure they're packaged good because maybe that's all they can afford is 10 bucks or maybe they really need these scissors for something and for them to show up bent you know or whatever be the case a little bit of piece of cardboard isn't going to change the shipping cost and it protects the item so I treat all sales equally all right so yesterday I sent out a pair of vintage guest jeans and I filmed a little clip that I'm going to add in right now showing you what to look for if you ever see vintage guest jeans. And there is a difference. One, they look identical, but one will sell for almost double what the other does. So let me show you and explain, and you can stick that in your memory bank, and hopefully when you see them, you'll remember, and you'll know which is which. Okay, so here's two pair of vintage guest jeans. From the outside, other than the color, they seem the same if you look at the triangles. Green, green, you might also see some in red. So this one I just sold for $50. This one only has comps in the 30s. Let me show you the difference of what to look for when you see them out in thrift stores. Okay, so here they are side by side. The lighter colored ones are older, but they are both vintage. So I'm gonna show you the one little detail 
that will make the difference between dating them and value. Okay, the rear pocket triangles at the green print on the lighter ones and here on the darker ones. And they are both vintage. You might also see them in red. Okay, so here are the tags side by side. The one on the left, they just sold for $50. And you see on the tag and on the label above, they both say George's Marciano. That is the more valuable. If you see that name with the grid and the green made in USA, vintage. The one on the right, you will not see any George's Marciano anywhere, but it does still have that green guess grid tag made in USA, so it is still vintage. Now the difference is 1994. Anything with George's Marciano on it was made from 1994 and before, usually like 1989 or 90 and up to 94. And no George's Marciano, it's 1994 to about 1999. Both are vintage, but with the George's Marciano is more valuable. All right, so I picked up two pair of jeans today. The first, Rock Revival. Excellent, excellent selling brand. Good money. Those will easily sell for 50 bucks. Don't find those too often, at least at the bins. And another excellent pair. You might not have heard this brand, Tacovas. These are also about a $50 pair of jeans. So good money on two pair of jeans. Cost about almost $3 per pair by weight. All right, start with some hard goods. Someone gave me this hat they were going to throw back, asked me if I wanted it. It's an embroidered University of Notre Dame hat. Decent condition, not quite vintage. Joe Rocket, this is a tank bag for a motorcycle. Those flaps have big strong magnets in it, as well as one up in the top. Has three separate pouches, and this sits on the tank of a motorcycle, and it's an easy way to carry your stuff. And then I got a Wii, Guitar Hero Guitar, untested. Um, everyone I've ever found at the bins has been good. Usually I'll look around the borders. If there's no physical damage, like look some kid whacked it against the floor or something like that, then usually they're good. So worth the shot. They charge two bucks, I think, for these. All right, now for the Toomey bags that were trashed, I did pull four luggage tags. Each bag had a tag. And unfortunately... Two of the tags are in bad condition, just like the bags were. You can see they're all scuffed up. When I first grabbed them, I didn't know if it was dirt or whatever, but they are scuffed, and even the other sides of them are. So those are not sellable. This one is sellable. You see both sides are good condition, so I will list that one. And the fourth one I put into my Tumi tag collection. You can see it right there, the gray one. These are all luggage tags from Tumi. All off of bags that I have sold. Okay, here is a really great find. I had a feeling somebody threw this back. They decided they didn't want it for whatever reason because it wasn't in the hard goods. And then later on in passing, they never changed dial. And all of a sudden, this was there. And the brand is ProSub DX500 Scuba Diving Regulator. So it's got the two mouthpiece gauges. Untested, of course, right now, but it's very clean. From my understanding is these usually will go bad from, you know, salt water eating away at the units if they're not washed after use. This looks to be in perfect condition. You know, luckily for me, I live a couple miles from the beach and there are scuba dive shops everywhere. So I'm going to take this to one down the street and have them test it. And this has great comps. And the lady charged me six bucks for this. Very heavy. But instead of weighing it, she just said, oh, six bucks. And as you see, comps are about a hundred bucks. So well worth six dollars. Mm -hmm.